All right, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to FAU for this special event. Uh, my name is Jaap Voss. I'm the director of the School of Urban and Regional Planning. Uh, my main role is to keep everybody on schedule, um, make sure that there's enough time left at the end to ask questions to uh, the commissioner. And I want to extend the welcome to everybody who is watching us online. My computer is sitting there, and the only reason it's there is to make sure that I know who is online. Um, We've actually been doing this now for a while. We started it in the fall with our Truth About Florida conference where we tried this. Uh, and then this summer we actually did a class that uh, we broadcasted online. Um, we're going to continue doing this. Now we have found with these kind of events that there's a disadvantage. And the disadvantage is that as soon as you send people an email that it will be live webcast, that they decide not to drive and they just stay at their office. Uh, so some of the local people I think at the last moment decided to be online. Uh, the good thing, though, is that there is a lot of people, and we are able to attract a much broader audience. And I just checked, so I'm going to tell you who was there for n at this point. We have people that are watching this event in Florida, and uh, just a couple of people in Orlando, Miami, Key Biscayne, Pompano Beach. People from the Netherlands are watching it. They're watching it in Meppel. I don't know what is in Meppel, but somebody in Meppel is watching this. Uh, the Hague, that didn't surprise me. Permarent, which sounds really interesting. It's my mom. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Drenthe, uh, then we have people watching this in Japan, Hawaii, Washington DC, New Orleans, Oregon, and New York. So I think, you know, uh, I want to thank these guys for helping us out and doing all the stuff, but I think it's well worth it, and I think we really reach a much broader audience when we do these kind of things. Um, with that, my role is limited. I'm going to introduce Dean Rosalind Carter, the Dean of the College for Design and Social Inquiry. Dean Carter. Thank you, Yap. And I want to welcome everyone uh, for this afternoon, and thank you so much for taking the time out of your day uh, for this very special occasion, uh, with the, uh, honored by the visit of the uh, Dutch Delta Program Commissioner. And forgive me in advance for the butchery I'm about to perform, <laughs> but uh, Yap coached me this morning. Veem Kalkin. Uh, I see my, uh, my Dutch is in progress. <laughs> uh, I thank you so much for coming uh, today uh, and welcome you uh, for this very special event, uh, something that is very important in our college, uh, the work on climate change and water and sustainability. Uh, since we are along the coast, sustainable coast, coastal living, uh, and I'm going, I promised I would be brief. So I'm going to turn it back to Yap. And again, thank you so much. All right, thank you, Dean Carter. Um, so before I introduce the Consul General of the Netherlands, I want to acknowledge some FAU people in the audience. I actually looked around and I saw some faces. Um, first of all, we have the Associate Provost for the Broward campuses, uh, Tony Abate. Uh, we have the Dean of the Graduate College and Vice President for Research, Dr. Barry Rawson. And I'm not going to mention everybody else because I saw a lot of you, so I'm going to just summarize it here. I saw faculty from Urban Regional Planning, Social Work, the Environmental Science Program, the Center for Environmental Studies, uh, Civil Engineering, and the College of Business, students from Urban Regional Planning, students from Ocean Engineering, and I think there is one FIU student from Journalism. Um, from outside the university, which I think is interesting for you to know, uh, we have representative of many departments of Broward County, uh, including environmental protection, growth management, uh, transit, water management, and emergency management. We have people from the city of Fort Lauderdale, South Florida Regional Planning Council, the Florida Department of Transportation, the USGS, the Florida Public Health Institute, Everglades and Dry Tortugas National Park Service, and Florida International University. And then we have several people from the private sector. We have uh, attorneys, planning professionals, real estate developers. Uh, so I think we have a really interesting mix of people here. And with all this, it's my pleasure to introduce General Counsel Simone Filippini. I'm sorry, you did go over there. I'm like, wait a second, where did she go? <laughs> uh, she's the Consul General of the Netherlands in Miami. Um, she's there as of August 1st this year. Uh, she comes to South Florida from Macedonia, uh, where she previously served as the Ambassador of the Kingdom of the Netherlands for four years. Please join me in welcoming uh, Consul General.
Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's a, it's a real honor and pleasure to be here uh, today. This is my fourth working week here in uh, South Florida. And um, already water is on top of the agenda, and I think rightly so. For the Netherlands, it is a strategic issue, and we're taking it as, as that with, with a water program, a Delta program uh, commissioner being appointed in the beginning of, uh, of last year. Um, this is certainly not the last time you will see me here. Um, I think that there's a lot of scope for a, uh, a strategic partnership between this part of the US and what we have to offer to learn from each other, to exchange knowledge and experience. We are basically a bit in the same boat. If you look, we were this morning at the South Florida Water Management District. If you see, we're both deltas uh, and there's a lot to share. Um, I'm there to facilitate any cooperation that might evolve from our meetings today and tomorrow, and I'm there at your service. Thank you so much. It's great to, to be here and to listen to the conversation, and I hope to get away here with much more knowledge than I came this afternoon. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, with that, I, um, I want to introduce Dr. Margaret Leinen. Uh, she's the Executive Dir uh, Director of the Harbor Brands Oceanographic Institute and Associate Provost for Marine, of Marine and Environmental Initiatives at Florida Atlantic University. Uh, she's also the Founder and President of the Climate Response Fund and previously held the titles of Assistant Director for Geosciences and Coordinator of Environmental Research and Education at the National Science Foundation. Please help me and jo join me in <laughs> welcoming Dr. Margaret Lyon. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> Thank you, Jaap. Uh, during a career that has focused on climate and global change, uh, I came to understand very early the very special role that the Netherlands plays in a very long-term view and a very integrated view of solving problems related to climate and global change, and especially on the forefront of water, water hazards, and ecosystems, including people. When I moved to Florida six months ago, I realized that I had moved to another one of those very special areas in which water, water hazards, hurricanes, floods, uh, and their intersect with us uh, was a strategic issue, as you said, Simone, a strategic issue that controls the economy of this area, our security, and our quality of life. And I think in that we share many, many strong uh, links with Netherlands and look forward to, uh, to hearing about them and to working with them. Uh, here at FAU, we have recently identified marine and environmental issues as a strategic theme of the entire university. Not the tr just the traditional science and engineering, but also um, the entire range of academic enterprise from social science, public policy, design, urban and regional planning, education, and embracing the arts and literature too. A holistic approach to what has to be one of the, the incredible problems of our lifetime. And Florida is right at the heart of this, one of the most vulnerable areas in all of the U.S., and, and we share with Netherlands of being one of the most vulnerable areas in the world to issues of water and water hazards. We really look forward to hearing from you, Commissioner Colgan. Thank you, Dr. Leinen. All right, with that, it's my pleasure to introduce uh, Commissioner of the Delta Program, Wim Kuiken. Uh, he's the Commissioner of the Delta Program of the Kingdom of the Netherlands, and I now understood a little bit better why we could talk about the Kingdom of the Netherlands. Uh, he's had a distinguished career, and I had to write this all down. <laughs> I'm not going to go over I'm probably going to miss a couple of them. He began as a policy, policy officer for spatial planning in the Ministry of Economic Affairs in 1979. He moved on to the Directorate of Regional Economic Policies, uh, Politics. He has also served as head of the Secretary General's Office of the, at the Ministry of the Interior. He was the Director of the Inter-Administrative Affairs and Information. He was City Manager of The Hague. I'm looking at <laughs> to see if I see approval or did I miss something here. As Secretary General of the Ministry of the Interior and Kingdom Relations, Secretary General of the Ministry of General Affairs, 
Finally, just prior to becoming the Delta Commissioner in 2010, he was Secretary General of the Ministry of Transportation, Public Works, and Water Management. So please join me in welcoming Delta Commissioner Wim Kuyken. Well, thank you very much for the introduction, and thank you for um, being here with me. It's an honor and a pleasure for me. Um, we arrived with the delegation yesterday in Miami, flying 10 hours from Amsterdam in time. Um, this morning, as said by the Consul General, we were at the South uh, Florida uh, Water Management District and the, um, uh, the, the Army Corps people here. Um, I'm on a trip for around about a week. Um, tomorrow, uh, emergency center here in Florida, then to Washington, uh, New York, and I end up in Toronto uh, f before I fly back. And I do that because um, I want to learn. I want to learn from abroad what, what, is the, what are the problems and the insights in other countries related to the delta problems we have in all the deltas in the world. I have a, a national um, task, but um, as we all know, uh, the international arena is so important for all of us that it's an honor for me to join the um, uh, experiences in the Netherlands with you and to hear from you what your questions and remarks are so that we both um, uh, can go on uh, on our way to a better planet um, in the future. Um, indeed, I studied too. I studied at the Free University in Amsterdam, and I studied, ec I studied economic affairs, economics, um, transport, spatial planning, urban planning, so it's fascinating to be here. Um, and indeed, I worked for more than 30 years in the public administration at different functions, and I learned a lot. And what I learned um, in, in my career, I bring in practice now in this um, unique um, function of uh, government commissioner for the Delta program I tell you about. And the reason that I also wanted to be in the, at the, your university is that science is so important for our work. Uh, to be done, and it is science from different disciplines. It, uh, it is from the meteorological climate uh, science to the engineering science, from spatial science to public administration. All kind of sciences needed uh, for the work we have to do in the Netherlands and also in other parts of the world, and it's a challenge to interconnect between. It is not a problem I will prove you that you can solve in one sectoral um, um, uh, approach. So I will introduce you about what we in the Netherlands are working on and where we uh, come from. This is the northwestern part of Europe. And there you see the Netherlands on the left uh, hand side. With four main rivers coming from the mountains, the Alps, um, for instance, bringing the water through our country to the sea. And we have uh, four um, uh, rivers. One, two, three, four in the north. <coughs> and that means that this is a real delta, where in the transition zone between the sea and the rivers, everything is happening. And that means, here are some characteristics and some figures, that means that um, 59, say 60% of our country is liable to flooding, is below sea level. And in specifically that part of the country, of course, there is where we make the money. That is the economic heart of our country. There we deserve two-thirds of our national income. At the port of Rotterdam, largest port in the world, Amsterdam here, The Hague. This is, this is the central part uh, for the economic heart of the Netherlands. So we have to do something to defend ourselves, and when it goes wrong, it goes terribly wrong, and we are for decades 
out of um, our economic development. <coughs> so, 59% uh, liable to flooding. That means that we are already for more than, well, seven, eight hundred years, are working with rather strong administrative bodies. We have, for instance, um, let's uh, begin with the central uh, body is Rijkswaterstaat, like the, the colleagues of the U.S. Army Corps um, on water management, they are doing that in the Netherlands. Um, but also regional, we have uh, water boards um, that, that are democratic um, bodies um, with a functional task uh, already more than 800 years old and they, um, they take care of the regional water systems. We have municipalities, of course, and we have provinces. And all those bodies are working in the Netherlands together or not. But we try to let them work together. <laughs> For the water sector, we have a legal obligation to protect, protect against uh, the flood. We have legally standards. For instance, in that western part, the coastline, a norm, a standard of one of 2,000 one of 10,000, in the north one on 4,000, um, you have to, um, uh, the, 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 you, you need the standard of that, uh, with that norm. That is by law. And we work every day on our delta. We have history, of course. In 1916 we had a flood in the north side, and that led us in 1932 to the Afsluit dike. We dammed the lake. I show you back. We made this dam, making this a freshwater lake, like your lake Ochiko Bay here. That was after a disaster. In 1953, we had a big flood disaster in the southwestern part of the Netherlands. that estuarium, and that brought us to the first Delta Commission advising for the Delta Works. And we worked for 40 years on the Delta Works in the Netherlands as a response to the disaster in 53. Um, and we made barriers, and we built dikes, and we did everything to keep the country safe, and now it is actually the safest Delta in the world. And in the mid-50s, we had very high river uh, levels and large evacuations. It went well, but more than 250,000 people had to be evacuated. And after that near disaster, we started again a program, the program Room for the River. The first two were solid um, structural uh, barriers and solutions. And in the 19th, we started also with spatial solutions, not only making dikes, but sometimes, where possible, giving room to the river um, in, a, in a way to lowering the, the water levels. But again, after a near disaster. And we know a lot, because we measure the same as you do here. We measure. We know a lot, and we Work and we work with scenarios, I tell you later. We know that the sea level rise. We measure that, 20 centimeters in one decade, in one, one uh, century, sorry. We think, it's not scientific proven yet, but that we have more extreme storms. <coughs> there is increased erosion, we know that all. We have an increase of river discharged in the last couple of decades with 10%. We have more and in intense rainfall, we measure. We have also in summer times, spring, summer times, a decreased river discharge. We have some very dry periods even in the wet Netherlands. This spring, we had a very dry spring and we were lucky that in June it started to rain. It never stopped again. but. So, there is salt intrusion, the same as you have here in Florida. 
and that affects the agriculture sector, well, the, the economic economy in the, the western part of the Netherlands. Our soil is subsiding. We know that. We measure that. And of course, we have spatial developments. National, the, the, the cities are growing. Um, we are building. Um, well, that is, this is well, a delta under pressure. And we know that. And when you know things, sometimes it is good to act. And that's what we did in the Netherlands. Um, we start, I call it an innovative approach. You judge about it, but I think it's an innov innovative approach. We start a Delta program, an integrated approach, uh, a rather holistic approach, a comprehensive approach to our Delta, knowing what is happening and what's developing. We did that after an advice of the second Delta Commission. That was a, a commission after Katrina here. In the Netherlands also, we said, well, we have to be prepared. So we asked a state commission to advise. In the most extreme circumstances, can we stay live in the Netherlands? And the answer was yes. Even in the most extreme scenarios of IPCC, you can live in the Netherlands in the future, but you have to do something. You have to defend yourself, you have to be prepared. And that was the reason that uh, the government decided to the Delta program. With two calls, very simple, for everybody in the Netherlands, all the bodies. We have to be safe now, but also in the future, we have to be prepared. Second goal, our fresh water supply has to be guaranteed also when we get drier periods. And we share three values together. Solidarity over generations, but also solidarity between regions. Flexibility, uncertain future, so be flexible in moving wherever possible with your measures. And sustainability, of course, the measures has to be sustainable. And we do it for the people, of course, and for the economy. As I said, we make our money in the transition zone of the Delta. So business, international business, comes and invests in the Netherlands when they know that we work on our safety. And not, as I said, as an answer to a disaster, but in advance to be prepared and to avoid it. And this program, we update it every year. And it's going to Parliament every year. And we ensure the continuity of it, of it because it is laid down in an act. We have a Delta Act, the legal basis for this program. This Delta Act just passed, passed the Parliament before summer. And in that act, is written down. There has to be a Delta program every year, and that Delta program has to contain the measures for the coming six years, a forecast for the six years after that, so 12 years, and a focus on 2050, 2100. We have a Delta fund, legal, a fund with 1 billion euros a year, maybe not so much, but after 80 years, it's 80 billion. So we can plan, and we can plan to finance the measures to take in the future. And in the law is written down there is a government commissioner for this program, and that's me. And that's new, also in the Netherlands. i explain that later. So from now to 2015, as I said, we work every day on our Delta with all kinds of pro programs. We have still some weak links in the coast. We repaired it. We have that program, Rooms for the River. It's under construction, and it will be finished around 2015, 2017, um, with more than 90 projects along the river side. But at the same time, we decided to be prepared for the period after that, after 2015. So we have a couple of years' time to do the right thing 
for the right moment. And the, the Delta program that I present every year contains in the first year, or that's the second year, an analysis of the problem. And the year after, to 12, the possible strategies to answer that. And the year after, the preferential strategies. And so, working to decisions that are political decisions. And after the decisions are taken, we have the Delta Works of the future, but not as a response to a disaster, but before. And how do we do it? I tell you, we do it in a multi-governance process. And that means that we work with these bodies we are told, t told you about, the water boards, the municipalities, the provinces, the ministries, together in programs. We are together looking for the facts we have to know. So everybody agrees after a year study on the facts. We work together on creative and innovative ideas to give the answer. So after a year, we think that everybody is comf comfortable with the solutions, not the choices, the solutions possible. We involve our stakeholders. It's a tra complete transparent process. Everybody can have an opinion, interest groups, advocacy groups, everybody can talk with us and bring in their point of views. But at the end of every year, the Delta Commissioner brings it all together in a proposal, the Delta program. And this proposal goes to government, and government decides on it, and it goes to parliament. So Parliament can see what the Delta Commissioner had as a plan, as a proposal, and what the government thinks about it. That is democracy. So it is a kind of supervising between, above, together with all those parties working on a safe Delta with a good freshwater supply in the future, legally based. About the program, we have nine sub-programs just for the interest of, of the public administration. And those sub-programs, that are the bodies where all those governments work together. Three national generic pro programs, so safety standards. Do we need to change, actualize our standards while there is more to defend than 550 years ago? What will be our urban and spatial planning in relation to our, our safety and our Delta Works? How can spatial planning help us to be more safe or to help us after the prevention to diminish the risks left? And the freshwater strategy. What will be the strategy for freshwater? Public, private, um, is it free of charge? Will we bring in every place in the country fresh water of any quality? Or can, can't we? Or, or what is the price for that? And six, six regional programs, and those programs are also multi-governance and are the, the regions in the Netherlands where are specific characteristics. So the Southwest Delta, for instance, or the rivers is an, an, another program than the coast. Uh, the Isel Lake, that big freshwater lake, is an other program. And the generic programs and these regional programs are brought together in the Delta program, and we find the solutions together. And that leads us to this decisions in 2014-2015. In, tw in 2014, I will do the proposal. In 2015, the government will decide. Five key decisions we have uh, select. The decisions who are actually structural for everything else. The first is what will be the safety standard in the Netherlands in the future? The second, what will be the strategy of fresh water supply? The third, 
what will be the urban and spatial regulation um, helping us to be safe? And then two regional, how do we protect the Rotterdam area with the harbor, with the salt intrusion, with the economic um, activities? And how do we, what do we do with the lake, the level of the lake? as uh, a possible bassin for uh, our fresh water. But when we change the level, well, you can imagine what happens then with your safety and everything else. But we have to prepare a decision because there are points in our system to be reached. I'll tell you about later. This is a very short slide. Our flood risk management policy has three layers, protection, dikes, Spatial, the, the use of land, spatial planning, and of course preparedness, the emergency planning, brought together in a strategy. Well, we know we have uncertain future. So we measure today, we measured 100 years ago, we measured in between, but we don't know what will be the future. So we worked, we work with four scenarios. We made four scenarios together with our Meteorological Institute and our Social Economic Planning Bureau. And, uh, well, you can see, is of course, the four uh, scenarios, not three, with, because then you choose the middle one. Uh, so we, we have four scenarios as possible futures. And every five years, we make an actualization of the scenarios. But it is very important for us and our people to work with, because that are the possible futures we, uh, we have. And then we go from the scenarios to strategies. And the strategies are um, well actually brought together with all the knowledge we have. And there I show you the tipping points. Because in our water system we have some points when you go beyond that point you have a disaster. For instance, Lake Ijsselmeer's level is higher than the sea. So there is free fall of water. When the sea level raises, rises, well, you know that there is a, tip a tipping point. There's a point that you cannot, well, anymore free fall your water. So then you have either to pump or to raise the level of the lake, etc. The Maasland barrier, that is a big barrier there in the, in the new waterway, the waterway to Rotterdam Harbor. It's now designed for one in a 10 year to close with an enormous storm at sea. Predictions are that maybe in 30, 40 years it will close every year. That can be a tipping point, and there can be a, a, a situation that it's not safe anymore. The same as the freshwater inlets. We have freshwater inlets in the western part of the Netherlands, but with the salt intrusion, well, they are threatened. So there are more and more periods that we have to close them. So is there a strategy to keep them safe or to find other water inlets for fresh water? So that requires uh, the strategy development we do in the program. And knowing that we have tipping points, we started the adaptive delta management. So we try to find solutions today, tomorrow, in all our works to do, even the planning of cities, in a way that the tipping points can go further away. So you, with an uncertain period, you try to be adaptive and actually buy time for your big decisions. That's what we talk about also with the South Florida Water Management District this morning. Very interesting because you have experience too with that. And at the same time, it is a robustness check of the strategies. So then, after 2015, when these big five key decisions are taken, structural for our delta, then we have, in a way, the, the delta works of the future. And that gives us the possibility to to innovate with the, with the private sector. We have, I have some examples. For instance, you see the, the, the image. That is the sand engine. We call that the sand engine. 
It's just an enormous um, uh, sand, uh, area of sand, brought in the coast, in front of the coast. And we expect, it's a pilot, we expect that with the sea and the wind in the coming 10, 15, maybe 20 years, it will be a natural defense of the coast. We now plenish every year a couple of million cubes uh, sand in front of the coast to keep the coastline on its place. This can be a very cost-effective way of defending your coast in the future. At the same time, creating recreation and nature. We try. But also the technology of sensors integrated in our dikes, and our dike bodies. We are trying to find a way that we know what's happening in the dike so your maintained maintenance programs and so you can change maybe a little bit. Um, and we try the fresh and salt water separation. We already had success in a lock, but maybe when it, we, maybe we succeed in a waterway that brings us in drier periods in the position that maybe we can keep the fresh water inland and the, south, the, the salt water outside. And it's an engine with bubbles brought in from the floor, of the, from the bottom of the, of the river. And we try to make a curtain, actually. But it's, it's a project for one and a half year, I think. But this Delta program, I want to tell you, gives us the opportunity, by the way we work, to find, with the business, with the private sector, innovative solutions. And that means, well, let, con let me conclude, that we have a, uh, well, I think, a new product. We have an export product. We have the five Dutch Ds. Maybe it's a joke, but uh, I believe in it. We have a Delta Act for a Delta program, a Delta fund, and a Delta commissioner, and we make Delta decisions to be prepared to the future. Um, well, and that's my message. Um, all deltas in the world are having the same problems. All deltas in the world have to do with different bodies, with different political uh, views, with interests. There's no problem. What we try to do is saying, okay, that is so, but it's so fundamental for the Netherlands not to, yeah, well, not to wait, that we give one person, one functionary, the Delta Commissioner, uh, the task, the responsibility to prepare us with everybody in the country for the future. And that's what I try to do. Um, and I learn a lot abroad also here. Um, and I work very hard with the people in the Netherlands to uh, keep a safe and, uh, and uh, attractive country, also at the end of the century. Um, to summarize this, I, I made a short film video of six minutes. Images are very powerful, as you know. So I end up with this film of six minutes, summarizing what I said to you in the last uh, 20 minutes. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. This was uh, Charles Groenhuizen. He was a um, um, uh, journalist for years here in Washington. Um, so I invited him to, uh, to do the, the speaking work of this uh, film. Um, thank you very much for your attention. Um, I think there are questions or remarks or criticism. Or Feel free, yeah, because I like uh, and I love to be a discussion <laughs> with all kind of interest uh, from people. Tell me, what do you want to know or what you want to tell me? Is it okay? okay. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Hi. 
Thank you. It was a <clears throat> pretty extraordinary presentation, and, and we're, um, I'm with Broward County Natural Resources Planning and Management Division. We have, uh, over the last decade, been utilizing some of the technical tools that have been uh, developed uh, within your country for water resource planning and management here locally. And um, we're very much involved in um, climate uh, adaptation strategies, working regionally with partners. And the investments, in particular these infrastructural investments, are so massive. Um, and I think about that coupled with the constraints that we have locally with regards to our natural resources. For example, the, the sand nourishment projects, I and mean, we have difficulty getting permits for projects, you know, half the size of what you've mentioned, and, and uh, the economics are, you know, a minor consideration when you think about the economic dependence that our region has on our coastal resources. So I wondered if that's ended up being a constraint or much of a consideration in, your, in, in, in many of the initiatives that have been undertaken, whether they be hard structures or uh, like the sand nourishment projects, and how do you balance the two? Um, well, actually, we, we are working uh, in, in this approach, working together to find the right solutions. And sometimes solutions can be natural solutions, we find out. Um, and sometimes you have uh, more, you need more structural solutions. We make for every project, and for every um, uh, measurement to take, a cost-benefit analysis. So we have to prove that um, it's cost-effective. Um, so that means that um, in our, the way of decision-making uh, in this Delta program, the different solutions are uh, on the table. And you can uh, also, what we do, we bring together the money of different bodies. So when, for instance, along the river, a city wants to start a new waterfront and combines it with a safety program in the Room for the River program, you can get integrated solutions which together are cheaper. And that is also the reason why we take this approach. Because we believe that um, these measures are taken for decades. So you have to be sure, as sure as possible, that everybody involved in it is a stakeholder. So we don't, of course we have different interests in it, and then we have politics to decide on. But we try to find solutions where everybody has a good feeling with. And everybody agrees on the safety side. So um, we bring in the resources from the different parties. But at the end, it has to be safe. Other questions? In, in the Netherlands, you've had um, hundreds of years or many centuries uh, to be dealing with this. Uh, we started draining the Everglades maybe 150 years ago the first time and you know, got a handle on it maybe just 100 years ago. And now we figured out maybe a lot of that was not even the right way to go. Uh, so we're really just beginning in, in getting on our feet this way. Um, do you think we have uh, much longer to go? <laughs> <laughs> well, how much longer do you think <laughs> it might take? <laughs> or, or how long, what you was, know, yeah. But let's be honest. We, we did after the flood in 1953. We, we did our famous Delta Works, and we closed um, the, the, the coastline. And we have also have uh, effects now in the estuarium where we are not so happy with. So there, there are always decisions to take and after <coughs> years you find out that maybe it could be different in the future. But what I really believe is when you have a little bit more time to study and to bring the different uh, points of view together, that you can find new solutions. So I think what we find in, in uh, after the, the mid-90s with the Room for the River project, there we have a completely new solutions. We never did in the Netherlands. Just find out and just try it. Um, so I don't know if, there, if you always need uh, 
uh, experience or, or a history for centuries. Um, I don't think so. Do you think that, that long term may have um, created a, a national tradition toward accepting uh, this issue? No, that's right. That's right. As you, as you can mention, that's also the difference between uh, the, the country of the Netherlands and here Florida, for instance, that, well, it's our existence. And people in the Netherlands, after the Delta work, feel safe. They feel safe with high norms and standards. But everybody knows that there is something happening in the, in the climate, in the nature. So everybody wants to know from government, are you working on the future? Um, so there, it is indeed different because we deserved our money, we made uh, our land from sea, and it's part of our history and our being. That's different, that's right. My name is Ronnie Best, and I'm with the U.S. Geological Survey, and I had the opportunity last year to visit the Netherlands, and I think we're going to have a group coming here in January to visit us in exchange. The two, two comments or questions, one of which is your example, 1953, a major flood. 1948, we had a major flood here in, the, in Florida. Guess what it led to? It led to the draining of the Everglades. So we have learned from our process that the engineering approach we took was a major failure. So, the, and the question, the, the other part of the conversation is 60% of your nation sits below sea level. We have a whole lot of land uh, upstream, uphill for us to move, to migrate to. So when we look at the economic concepts that you're proposing for the deltas, a different, completely different concept as you come to the US. That's right. Good afternoon, Commissioner. David Prosperi from the Urban and Regional Planning Department. I have two questions. Uh, one is there are other deltas in Europe, and is there an exchange of information back and forth? Uh, Hamburg, Belgium, France. Yeah, the answer is yes. Uh, of course, we have to work together with the neighbor countries where the water is coming from, as you understand. Um, Germany, Switzerland, France. So we work very closely together in the, in the, in the, in the committees uh, ar ar along the river. Uh, but indeed, I also visit, for instance, London or, or, or Hamburg. In Hamburg, they have very interesting um, developments uh, with the urban development related to the, the harbor and the, and the sea. So they are making new concept of, of uh, urban planning uh, related to water with, uh, with uh, waterfronts uh, and, and, and bridges on 10 meters below, uh, above sea level, and very interesting. So we learn from that, and I'm, I was in London at the Thames, Bar uh, the Thames Barrier, but also the Thames Estuarium, and I learned a lot about their <coughs> process of adaptive management. They have also decision trees, actually, um, f before they, uh, they take a decision for a new barrier, maybe at the end of the century, they have different decision lines depending on what they measure and what they, uh, what, what developments are. So, yes, indeed, we learn a lot from each other. Um, I was in Singapore, and Singapore uh, delegation was last week uh, with me in the Netherlands. Um, well, they have different, different problems in the Delta, but well, it, it, it has all to do with, um, with uh, too much and too less. Thank you. The second question is a bit self-serving. Uh, I loved the notion that science matters. I think that's crucial. Uh, but you're sitting here in, in a college for design and social inquiry that is not the College of Engineering or the College of Biology or things of this nature. And the question is, what is the science of organization and governance that seems to matter? And what have you learned? Well I, well, I believe in the interdisciplinary approach. I really believe, and I discussed that also with the universities in the Netherlands and also abroad, um, I believe that you have to bring together, for instance, on this subject, this is multidisciplinary subject. This is not engineering. This is public administration. This is social uh, uh, development. This is uh, meteorological uh, climate uh, models. 
And I think it's important that we bring together, around the globe actually, the best scientific uh, people for, for this purpose. Because more and more people are living in deltas. Also in the developing countries. And there's a lot to learn. And um, I really believe that when we ask the science, the fundamental science, but also the practical science, um, to help us, we have goals, we have values. So they can work under the umbrella of a program like this. And that helps, that really helps. So I'm, I believe it's possible, yeah. Thank you. Hi, um, I'm a student here in the credit program. Talk a little bit more about the funding for the Delta program. Is it a, a speci specific amount that's dedicated by Congress, or is it special assessment on citizens and private organizations? Well, we, we have different sources. Let me uh, try to explain. We have the, the water boards we have to uh, keep the, the regional water system in shape and uh, the safety of the regions. They, uh, uh, they can ask the money from the people. And the agricultural, the, 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 the people living in that region, for the for the day-to-day -day work on the water system. So that's a kind of tax. Um, on the national level, we have uh, for our Rijkswaterstaat, our course of engineers on the wa on, on the water management, they have their budget from from the government to do their works. For this program. Um, our parliament has set aside 1 billion euros a year in a fund, a Delta fund, for this program. So on top of all the other uh, means we have for our regular maintenance and our regular investments, for the new decisions to take, we have already a fund uh, with money in it. If it's enough, I don't know. But first the plans, first the decisions, and we know that there is money, and then it's a matter of planning and, and, uh, and, and bringing together also maybe funds from provinces when they want spatial planning uh, around the rivers, as I said. So this, this law gives the possibility to, to work on this for the future. Hi, my name is Nancy Gassman. I'm with the Broward County's Energy and Sustainability Office. We had talked briefly when you were talking with Mr. Mathis about the issue of uh, a national tradition of holding back the sea and dealing with water issues. And you also talked about one of your visions and your values as being solidarity over generations. Uh, in my experience in my lifetime, the values of a nation change about every 10 or 15 years. <coughs> and the values and the interests of the politicians change on probably daily, <laughs> let alone uh, generational periods of time. Right now, you've got a fund that you're building up that's a billion a year. And again, in, in my experience, if that fund is not is sitting there and somebody else has a political reason to want to use it for a different purpose, they'll go in and take the money out of the fund. How, how is it that you can plan and have strategies for maintaining solidarity of, of purpose? over generations? Well, this is a very fundamental question because um, it is one of the reasons that the same politics in the Netherlands decided to start this. The politics decided to create a functionary, a commissioner, which can make plans over periods of political cabinets for years. And of course, the politics decide. And of course, my program, my proposal, made together with all the stakeholders in the country, they can decide on. And of course, they can decide to, to skip the million dollars. But then I say to them, explain to your people what you're doing. It's fine with me. You're elected. Me not. But in this delta, where you need the safety and you need to work every day because when you don't, it's over. I hear them explaining that they cut the budget. 
I don't think so. Well, I have a question. Um, so when I listen to you, I see there's a lot of similarities, right? And, and I think Ronnie related to uh, the flood. I mean, the same kind of things are happening here. The adaptive management, which you also see in the water management district. But I think there's also some differences. Uh, one of the main differences that I see is that when I look at your approach, it actually has land use and water involved in it, while here those two functions are very much separated. Now, what I think is interesting, so I think that's a problem that we have, and I would like your thoughts on how could you address that. The other thing that I think is really interesting is that here there's actually one person who, you, who champions the cause uh, in, in, in the Netherlands. Well, I don't see that here. I mean, I would not know where to go. Do I go to the Army Corps of Engineers? Do I go to South Florida Water Management District? Who do I actually talk to? Who's actually the champion of this plan? Do you get any thoughts on that? No, the last question I cannot answer because <laughs> I'm not in the position to answer it. But I can tell you with the same experience in the Netherlands why we did it. Because spatial planning in the Netherlands is the responsibility of municipalities and the province within a national framework. Water management is the responsibility of the water board and Rijkswaterstein. And we say to each other, well, working next to each other doesn't bring the solution. So we really want, on those two goals of the program, we want to work together to find the right solutions. And of course, there are, at the end, of the two or three years decisions to take. But I'm convinced that at the end, and it is completely transparent for everybody, when the politicians take a decision, all the people involved understand it because they were part of bringing solutions into the decision process and not reacting on a, a, a proposal from a Rijkswaterstaat or a city or a province. But it's really uh, working together. And that's new. That's also new for us. And I think we're in favor because it's the existence of the Netherlands that helps. But it's an approach, I really believe, in the public administration, this is an innovative way of being government. And I think people like that. <laughs> I wanted to say um, I really appreciated your no-nonsense approach to this. And I have actually probably more technical, maybe easier question for you to answer. Um, we both have issues of saltwater intrusion and how to deal with too much water, too little water, how water is being managed. One of them is that we sometimes are compared to what your structural solutions have been, the dikes, the dams, the things of that nature. In Florida, we have sort of a unique condition where we have porous limestone that doesn't allow us to, to do those kind of structures to have the same kind of sophisticated result that you've been able to manage. Do you have any recommendations for South Florida how we're supposed to deal with that? Because we do have a very different hydrology, geology that we're um, having to um, be challenged by. I'm sorry, but I am not an engineer. <laughs> <laughs> and um, maybe that's the reason that I'm on this position now. <laughs> um, so I, I'm really sorry that I can answer, cannot answer. But maybe one of, of my staff members? No? No. You are an engineer. <laughs> she even. But do you have an answer yourself? Um. I think that it, part of it has to be the approach that we take with the water. Instead of fighting it back or seeing it as a problem, we need to find the power of that water and use it to our advantage. It needs to power us and make energy and yeah. create our solutions yeah. rather than us trying to hold it back. I don't yeah. think we have another option. Well, that, well, then you give the answer. And it is now, I mean it, because this is partly also the answer in the Netherlands. You cannot stay, uh, you cannot keep on going with raising your dikes. Then you, you're a country behind dikes. What we do at the coastline is actually we take the offense. We are not defending ourselves, we're bringing sand out. So <coughs> we, we attack the enemy. 
And that's also in soccer. That's the best way to win. <laughs> I also enjoyed the uh, no-nonsense approach. Sometimes I think we, we worry that we're the all manner of nonsense approach. Um, I, uh, having spent uh, time uh, listening to the dialogue in the U.S. which said that there wasn't a problem for a long time, so we didn't need to mitigate and we didn't need to adapt, there just wasn't a problem. Uh, we're, it seems now as though the U.S. has really uh, pushed over even more into the idea of adaptation rather than mitigation. And I was struck by the amount of mitigation, you know, the very aggressive strategy that you've identified. As you look out for the next century, uh, is there confidence in the ability of mitigation, uh, or are you seeing more? Are you seeing downstream more need for uh, adaptation, maybe in the second half of the century? I, well, what we decided in the analysis is that adaptation is necessary anyway. Because even when it, we, we are successful globally in mitigation, then it takes for a very long time when it will be an effect. So anyway you need adaptation strategies, knowing what you measure. And, and I, well, yeah, so, so I think uh, uh, in the Netherlands we, we separated it. Uh, not politically, but in the approach. Because this Delta program is national, and the mitigation programs are global. <coughs> so that is one of the differences. So, uh, in, in my opinion, the adaptation uh, is needed as long as uh, we measure the change in, in our system. So I wanted to build on the comment I made earlier. I think the Dutch people are the gurus for Delta. There's no doubt. No one else in the world can compare with you. You've learned through the process the value of nature and, and working with nature. I think your building with nature program that you have is phenomenal. Both on the coastal system as well as your inland. Your uh, room for the river is phenomenal. We can certainly learn from that here. And I think we may have started learning that this year. The challenge I think we really face here is your vision for governor, governance that is multi-generational. And so when you go to Washington next week, my question to you is how do you, how can you convey the value of those three approaches as a vision for the future. I mean, you've done it well here for the, for the Netherlands. But that isn't a Netherlands issue. It's a global challenge. And I think you conveyed it very well. So how are you going to do this when you go to D.C.? <laughs> and we need your help, please. Well, first of all, I tell them that I was here. <laughs> <laughs> and I started my working visit here. Um, but um, well, well, actually, I know that the Netherlands is working together with uh, California, with uh, uh, Louisiana, with also here with Florida. Uh, we have contacts and uh, interrelations about uh, the New York City waterfront um, developments. So there are relations. But the political and um, uh, uh, the, the, the way we organize the public administration is completely different. So we have to be honest. Um, in this country, your states are, uh, are actually uh, the main players. Um, but you need also the federal uh, layer, I guess. What I try to give to, uh, to um, also in Washington will give, is the approach that you have a problem or a challenge, name it, that is multidisciplinary, 
that is um, going over separate bodies. When you think as politicians that it's fundamental, then find an approach that it can be fundamental and give room to the people to come with solutions. At the end, you can decide yourself. So that is my message. I'm uh, Piet Scarlatos and uh, Commissioner. I really appreciated uh, your presentation. I am a coastal engineer myself, and I know you know what an excellent job uh, people in the uh, Netherlands are doing. My question, however, is those massive projects, they have, no matter what, some kind of negative environmental impact. And my question is, are there groups opposing to whatever you are doing? And how vocal they are? No, I think you're right. That, uh, as I said before, uh, the Delta Works and the, the closing of the coastline in the southwestern part of the Netherlands uh, has affected the estuarium. But we try now to take measures to repair where possible. For instance, one of our dikes, we decided to open it once in a while, once in a time when possible, to give salt the possibility to come in the fresh areas <coughs> behind. So we try to diminish the, the negative uh, effect. And as I said before, I really try in the Delta program and the different sub-programs to involve all stakeholders. So we have a beautiful um, natural uh, system in the northern part, uh, the Wadensee. Uh, it's um, a world heritage. And there are also economic activities there. And in the Delta program, we, we want to, to keep also the people from the natural and environmental groups in the program. And I find out, really, at the table, looking for a solution on one of the islands to keep that island safe, on the table, drawing with each other, they find a solution what, which was acceptable for everybody there, <coughs> with natural um, uh, uh, sediments in front of dikes, bringing that in <coughs> and let it grow, etc., etc. And what I will, will, um, uh, will show uh, next month when the, de the second Delta program uh, will be published in, in, at the opening of a parliamentary year is that the natural uh, solution for safety, I proved that they are cost effective in some cases. Not, not for big hurricanes, and et, et cetera, big storms, but for the normal safety, you can do a lot with building with nature. Um, and it gives. Even, even the water management um, uh, bodies accept it now, that it is one of the solutions to keep yourself safe. So maybe it looks like a, a dream or a, a pink uh, uh, bubble, but there are more and more cases that interest groups are finding each other on a solution when you ask them to make the solution together. And sometimes it doesn't succeed and then you say, okay, then we take a decision. Hi, Commissioner. Uh, my name is Cheryl Mante. I was a student here and actually now I'm an adjunct professor. So I'm more of a designer type. Um, my question is mainly, uh, Looking at Florida, I've been here for six years, and in the back I have a canal. I'm not a scientist, but I can see this year in the drought, it probably went down at least a meter of water. And when, even when it's raining, I see neighbors that water their lawns. So do you have any strategies concerning like re-education of people or bringing consciousness to you know, people who live in the Netherlands when there's water restrictions, if any, or things like that. Um, yes, it, it, this is 
this is completely right what you're saying. Um, uh, yes, we have uh, we have uh, advertisement campaigns from from government to to convince people to be uh, econo call econom in an economic way with their water. Yes, we have, and there are some periods of very dryness that there are restrictions for people, and uh, we try to convince them to uh, to work with us. Um, and I think that pricing is the next step. I think uh, it is also when you. I mean, economists, so it's easy to say for me, but the prices can, can play a role. So I think that also in the Delta program, uh, at this moment, fresh water, you say raw or fresh water, not drinking water, but fresh water is free, um, uh, available for uh, agriculture for everybody. Um, uh, and we, we actually don't have a policy, no goals, no targets, as we have with safety, with norms and standards. But in well, maybe uh, when we have more dry periods, then we have to to decide on uh, first safety first. So we have to uh, keep our, <coughs> our dikes wet, and so we have a, um, uh, a sequence uh, of. Uh, but that's not policy. That is uh, actually emergency uh, planning. So I think in the Delta program we will. Uh, I will propose to start uh, uh, formulating goals um, for the freshwater supply and have the discussion with the private sector, uh, who is paying. Um, uh, maybe they want to pay. You never know. Um, can, we, can we deliver in every place every quality water? Not sure. So we're starting in the next year a discussion on goals, policy, cost-benefit analysis, and then we will take a decision on the fresh water supply, the strategy in the future. Um, that maybe is not a direct answer to uh, your question, but um, I think government can do a lot on it. Uh, and social uh, control too. All right, Commissioner, thank you so much. It's five o'clock and we're supposed to stop, but I did get one question and I actually think it's an appropriate question to end with. And the question is, what is the role of the university uh, in the whole Delta program and how you make decisions? Well, uh, as I said, I, I work together with universities. Um, it's very interesting to see that, for instance, the, the University of Delft um, started their own Delta program within the, ministry, within the university. So I visited them. I was there for a day, I guess. And the different faculties together um, are gathering around this program. So they read with us, they talk with us, and they do research based on what we do, and we want to know. And and sometimes I challenge them. And uh, we had, for instance, a discussion on the multifunctional use of, of water barriers. Uh, some regulators say that's not possible. At the university, they said, well, that's possible. I said, prove it. Just be my guest. So university is now involved in proving that it's possible. Uh, in the matter of content, uh, in the matter of regulation, in the matter of technical solutions. So I challenge also universities and ask them to work together we have a um, knowledge agenda. We published a knowledge agenda with 190 questions we have to answer. And well, everybody is free to give the answer. So compete on it. All right, thank you so very, very much. <laughs> All right, that concludes our program. Uh, I'm sure that if you stick around and have some questions, the commissioner might be able to talk with you for a while. Um, thank you all for coming out.